Welcome everybody to Bad Jump Destination with me, your host, the Cryptonimatron. Today, I've got another very interesting decentralized finance project to bring to you. Let's get down to it. Crom. It sounds like something Conan the Barbarian might say in surprise when he finds out you can actually trade on Ethereum for zero fees. That's right, I'll say it again, zero fees. Crom is short for Chromatica a next-generation decentralized exchange trading platform powered by Uniswap and Chainlink. In this video, I will explain and demonstrate how it works and give you my thoughts on why Chromatica is an innovative, undervalued and hidden gem, capable of taking on bigger competitors in the space like One Inch. But first, before we get started, please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and click on that bell notification icon to get alerts when I upload new content. Okay. Let's get down to it. So, how can you trade on Ethereum for zero fees? Well, I will try to explain it in layman's terms how it works, but in order to do so, we first have to look at Uniswap version 3 and one of its features that was introduced over its predecessor version 2, called Concentrated Liquidity. On Uniswap version 2, liquidity providers, or LPs, provided liquidity across the whole range of a given pair, and had to provide the same amount of each pair being swapped. This meant that whatever the price, swaps could still occur. This was not particularly favorable to assets that experienced little price fluctuation, such as stable coins. So let's use DAI and US dollar coin as the examples. Both of these tokens are pegged to the US dollar, so the swaps will occur between a very thin range, plus or minus 1%. This means that the liquidity provided on this pair is very inefficient, as out with this range, the liquidity that has been provided is never going to be used. Nobody wants to sell a US dollar for 97 cents, and nobody wants to buy a US dollar for $1.03. Unused liquidity generates no swap fees for the users. With Uniswap version 3, concentrated liquidity was introduced, meaning users could pick a range in which to concentrate their liquidity. An example would be putting one Ethereum and 4,000 US dollar coins down into a pool as liquidity. The user can pick a concentrated range between, say, $3,800 to $4,200. All swaps within this range earn the user's fees. Swaps out with that range do not. This improves efficiency of the capital being used as liquidity. Still with me? Okay, so let's look at range orders. When adding liquidity to the Uniswap version 3 pool, the user selects the pairs and the fees. They select the target price range, setting a minimum and a maximum for providing the liquidity. The user can usually select a price range lower or higher than the current price. The user deposits the amounts of two tokens into the pool according to the price range selected. If the target price range is including the current price, the user needs to deposit both tokens in this pair. This is because the deposit needs to be immediately used for swaps since the price range is within the current price. This is where range orders come in. If the target price range is higher than the current price, the user can only deposit one of the tokens, the first token of the pool. This deposit will only be used when the current price moves within this price range. If the target price range is lower than the current price, the user can only deposit the other token, the second token of the pool. This deposit will only be used when the current price moves within that price range. These are known as range orders on Uniswap version 3. Range orders are similar to limit orders, but the swaps are automated back and forth between the two pairs to earn the user fees, which is the main purpose of providing liquidity. To effect a limit order, single side liquidity would have to be manually withdrawn by the user after a swap has been initiated. This would prove very difficult on Uniswap version 3 as the pair would have to be constantly monitored and the actions initiated by the user themselves. Chromatica automates this order process on Uniswap version 3. It allows users to place limit orders which are affected on the protocol as range orders, earning the user the fees back for providing the liquidity. This is why it's so innovative. Chromatica uses Chainlink Keepers, also known as bots or automated smart contracts, to monitor pair positions so that when a user's target is hit, the amount deposited gets automatically swapped and sent to the user's wallet, along with the liquidity fees earned. I'll link to a couple of articles in the description below that explains in more detail how the Chainlink Keepers work and how they are utilized by Chromatica. Chromatica consists of four main elements. Automated smart contracts for creating trades and processing them, which are powered by Uniswap. The front end or user interface for interacting with those Chromatica smart contracts. 
Off-chain decentralized processing services responsible for active processing of the trades powered by Chainlink keepers and the Chrome token, an ERC20 utility token used for paying the service fee. The fee is paid by the users and is used to cover the costs of the processing services done by the Chainlink keepers. More on the token a bit later. There is a flat service fee charged to pay the Chainlink keepers, and this is paid in Link. This is the same amount regardless of the size of the swap, but the way the swap is performed means users get most of the service fee back for liquidity provision from the range order. Chromatica is currently deployed on Layer 2's Arbitrum and Optimism, with an Ethereum mainnet launch coming later this month. Two audits have been conducted, one by MythX and another by Certic. Results of the Certic audit found eight issues, one major, two minor, and other observations in the smart contracts. The team consists of three guys, all of whom are developers. The Chrome token is an ERC20 utility token deployed on Ethereum, secured by Open Zeppelin. The total supply is 100 million and no more can be minted. 80 million Chrome are already in circulation, most being held by the community, with about 20 million in liquidity available for trading on Uniswap version 3. For those concerned of a liquidity rug pull, don't be. Uh, the liquidity has been burned, and you can check the burn transaction on Etherscan, linked to in the description below. A further 20 million Chrome tokens are being held in a multi-sig Gnosis safe wallet and will be used only for project funding. So why do I like this project? Well, it's innovative. It solves a real problem of high swap fees by automating the process through range orders, as I have tried to explain. Uh, it will allow limit swaps to be carried out on Ethereum mainnet for low fees. And this is the holy grail of near zero fees for swapping between pairs. We know how expensive swapping on Uniswap and other decentralized exchanges can be on Ethereum mainnet, especially when gas is high. The token has an actual utility, it pays for the service fee when swapping, thus it has a use case and a value in actually holding it, other than pure speculation. And of course, you don't have to use Ethereum to pay the gas fees, which people may not, may not want to do, uh, they might want to be stacking Ethereum, so paying for fees in Chrom might suit them. At the time of making this video, the project market cap is ridiculously low at around $10 million. This represents, in my opinion, a great investment opportunity for a low market cap project with a working product that solves a real pain point in decentralized finance. And with adoption in the future, who knows where this can go? Okay, so let's demo the platform, at least try to use it. Now I've got a ridiculously low amount of Ethereum in this Optimism uh, wallet here, but I'll try to use it anyway. So what have we got here? All right, we've got 0 0.002 uh, ETH, which is probably about $6. Let's see if we can buy some Chrome on a limit order using that little bit of Ethereum that's in this wallet. Okay, so let's select say almost half of the Ethereum we've got in this wallet, okay? And it won't go through because you have to trade above the current market price. As I explained before, it's using the system of range order. So we have to go higher uh, than this current amount. So one Ethereum at the moment equals 29,560 Chrom. So we go a little bit higher. Let's go 31,000 Chrom per Ethereum. So we get a little bit more bang for our buck. And then we trade, we confirm. And as we can see there, our trade is going to cost some layer one fees, layer two gas fee, and the total is 0.0017 ETH. So we confirm, and there we go. We've swapped for exactly 31 Chrom. Uh, and there we go. That's how it works, basically, guys. So the um, while the swap is being initiated, you receive a, a type of NFT, which... Uh, represent your limit order essentially and that means that uh, until that limit order is filled you hold that nft as proof of the transaction now when the limit order does get filled you will see my balance down here change to 31 chrome and whatever uh, liquidity fees i've earned as well which should almost equal the fee i paid to swap so I hope that was clear. I hope you understood how it works. Um, the platform is working fully on optimism. And as I said, there will be a mainnet launch later on this month. So I'd like to thank Heinze.eth. His article is about the best 
article I've read on Chromatica and I took the liberty, uh, sorry mate, of using a couple of his infographics in the video. Um, so I'll link to his article in the description below. Uh, have a read of it, it explains the way Chromatica works in more intricate detail. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you found the video entertaining or educational or even both. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want me to cover any project that you're interested in, leave a comment below. Okay, thanks guys. I'm off for a beer. Uh, have a great week and I'll join you on the next one.